This is Twit. Today, uh, yesterday was the uh, big day, June 18th. I did not see it. Oh, did something happen yesterday? I didn't even notice. Uh, that's um, the Copilot Plus PC release, dude. I did not see a flood of reviews. I thought I would see like also, but I uh, guess. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, what's going on? Lots, lots is going on. What's happening? Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can remember the timing on this. Uh, but, 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 uh, I don't know. A week, 10 days ago, whatever it was, started having briefings, right, for specific PCs. We were told, Microsoft asked, by which I mean demanded, that PC makers not ship out review units to anybody until after they were able to fix recall. So, oh, that's going to be a while. <laughs> well, no, no, things have changed. This is all in flux. So at the time, the plan was we're not going to send anything out until the day of the launch, like Tuesday. Oh, wow. June 18th, right? Yesterday. So no one was going to have yeah. this stuff until then. But. And then, yeah. <laughs> so it was okay. I, I, I don't think any of this is like an NDA type thing, but there was a real specific kind of first boot experience they were requesting of us, which was aimed at nobody getting a peek at what was going to be there originally, right? Mm. And um, I think everybody, well, I mean, in case it's not obvious, um, you know, when you open a computer for the first time and you go through that out-of-box experience, there's a segment very early on that says, well, actually, there are two segments in the out-of-box experience, but the, the first one occurs very early on and it says looking for updates. And sometimes it will install updates, right? And so... That's normal. The plan... We expect yeah, that. I mean, this... You know, I mean, Microsoft has a multitude of ways to up update Windows now. So I plan my life fun. for that whenever I'm unboxing anything. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, somewhere in the notes, I think I have a, a joke about this as being like the Xbox gamification of Ubi. Like, you know, you uh, pre install like a Call of Duty game and then the day arrives, you're like, here we go. It's like, oh, we get a little update to install yeah, 151 gigabytes. gigabytes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Please so, stand. yeah. As of a week or 10 days ago, whatever it was, the plan was. That Copilot PC, you know, these things were already in this channel, right? Or they're out in the, you know, they're out in the world somewhere in boxes and things. So they would ship these things out to reviewers uh, on Monday, get them on Tuesday, unless you live in Mexico and you get them maybe Wednesday or in some Mexican schedule, we'll see. But anyway, um, and you would go through this process, right? And it will do the update. And if, you know, you don't get to see the old recall experience, right? There are obviously going to be updates in Windows Update as well. There are going to be app updates. A lot of the AI experiences are in apps. Like, you know, this is just honestly, as as at least one of the PC makers said, it's probably what you do all the time anyway. But, you know, this is we're just asking in this one case. So, OK. And then Thursday, <laughs> Microsoft suddenly announced that it was going to delay recall. And uh, there <laughs> just the rationale for this is so it's impossible not to laugh. but. Uh, they're going to test it, as I say in the notes, with the crack team of testers and the Windows Insider program first, because those guys are just on the ball and going to, you know, solve all the problems. And no one said this, but it's pretty clear that it was easier to rip recall out of Windows than it was to fix it, so to speak, sure. uh, according that to the changes sense. that they said they were going to make. Plus, who knows? Maybe they found other problems, right? All of a sudden, they're paying attention to security again, right? So maybe they did a little review and they were like, yeah, we need more time than this. We need more than a week or nine days or whatever that was they would have had. So uh, let's see, how do I explain this? People probably remember that the previous week, like as of last Wednesday when we did the show, Microsoft had paused the rollout of the latest build of 24H2 that went to the release preview program the release preview uh, channel of the Windows Insider program. It didn't actually go away. Like they, 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 they well, that, yeah, they, they stopped shipping it. Uh, you know, they stopped putting it out. Now, if you had followed my tip from, I don't know, a month or so ago, you would have also noticed, I think we talked about this last week, that last Tuesday was Patch Tuesday, a week ago Tuesday. And 22H2 got uh, Windows updates, 23H2 uh, got Windows updates, 24H2 did not. And it would have been that same build that they were sending out to the release preview program, right? So, which is the 
uh, or would have been the so-called like initial stable release of 24H2, the version that you would have updated to on your Copilot plus PC yesterday. This is like, as I say this out loud, I'm wondering if this makes sense to anybody. I'm sorry. This is the schedule is what happened. But anyway, they delayed it. And that's why we didn't get the Patch Tuesday update. I think I talked about this last week. Um, and then over the weekend, I think on Saturday, Microsoft uh, unpaused <laughs> the, the deployment of uh, this Patch uh, Tuesday update. Uh, it went out to the release preview. So if you're unstable, you all of a sudden you can check Windows Update. You would get it. It's the build you will get if you have a Copilot Plus PC. Um, the experience is slightly different on those PCs because uh, recall is mentioned in the out-of-box experience, but now it says coming soon. <laughs> it's not, you know, click here to do it or click here to not to do it, right? Um, or in the past dark pattern, you know, pretend it's not there. Don't worry, we're not recording you every day, all day long. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So here it is. So it's, what is it? It's Wednesday. So as of Monday morning, the day before the Copilot PC launch, Microsoft had shipped something that was basically the first stable version of 24H2. Um, PC makers started saying out their review laptops. And, and then yesterday happened. And yeah, that's why you saw it happened Leo. yesterday. <laughs> yeah, not too much. Well, a bunch of people went to stores or a bunch of people sat by the... Um, the front door and waited for UPS to arrive or whatever. Um, and these things, they arrived on time, right? Because they were out in the world. There's you know, a comment on your night. site who got his Surface Pro. Your yeah, a bunch of did. Actually. Uh, Raphael got one. Yeah. Um, yeah, a bunch of people did. Um, but, you know, through the normal channels, right? Like my, sur I, I, I sorry, I should say, I ordered a Surface laptop, as, as, as I think you know, and it arrived yesterday as well in McCungy, Pennsylvania, which is approximately 2,700 miles from where I am right now. Um, I had my niece who was staying at the place uh, watching the cat sit out front with a shotgun to make sure UPS didn't just drive by. And uh, she was able to get it. She didn't have to sign for it, but it did come. And by the way, the thing came at like five of, no, 10 minutes to five in the afternoon. Like That's what if I had been home, I would have been going nuts. Yeah, he <laughs> you know? says that to me too. Always. Oh, it's the oh. worst. Um, and so we'll see what happens with the review laptop. I'm expecting to get hopefully today. It was supposed to be today. I mean, we'll see. But from whom? Uh, from HP. Oh, nice. Yep. And then I'll be getting one from Lenovo as well. But they haven't uh, gotten back to me yet on whether they're going to send so it here or not. Did but, all so all the companies that said they were going to ship Copilot Plus PCs mm -hmm. did ship yep. on June 18th. That actually did happen. Yep. Okay. It did happen. Yep. Well, that's good. yeah. I mean, so in in that sense, it kind of. Uh, you know, they kind of made the schedule, right? They kind of did it, right? So that's good. Um, and then, like I said, you know, the the experience, honestly, it's not that different from a normal laptop experience. And I, and you know, I've kind of documented this for normal people in the book. You know, when they get a PC, they should go through this process anyway. But, you know, you sign in with a Microsoft account if you want to get your, um, your, you know, the AI features and so forth. Uh, recall requires it, which is not there. <laughs> um 24H2 got rid of most of the workarounds to not using a Microsoft account. It got rid of all of the workarounds for not being online. So you mm. have to be online to set this thing up. Although, you know, I, I expect we're going to find other ways to work around that. Um, there is one remaining workaround, which I'm going to document soon for, I, I'm sure I've mentioned it somewhere, but um, that will work if you just don't want to use a, a Microsoft account. So that's still possible, but most people will sign with a Microsoft account. They'll get the updates go through the UB, they'll get the little uh, recall screen. It now just mentions it doesn't have buttons to press anymore. You know, well, there's a next button, but nothing to agree to or anything. And then you get into the desktop. And, you know, if you're familiar with 24H2 as it is on a PC today, like a normal PC, a non-Copilot Plus PC, it's, you know, it's exactly the same. There's nothing different, except that in certain apps, you get those Copilot Plus AI features, which, you know, you could fit on the back of a credit card. There aren't that many of them. Um, and you should do, and we've been advised to, but you should go and, and install updates, right? You're you're probably going to have a firmware update. Uh, Surface is ship firmware updates. Uh, I'm not sure about the other PC makers, but I know at least some of them will have those. And then go into the store and update the apps because, like I said, a lot of those uh, AI experiences are coming through apps like Paint or whatever. Um, and yeah, you know, it, you uh, count, the count on some time. Does anything, right? Like, the thing I want to know from you is you're going to go do something in paint or or clip chain yeah. or one of those apps 
and it's going to be dramatically better on the Snapdragon machine. Uh, the uh, MPU does something. Let me stop you right there. Uh, uh, <laughs> dramatically. Okay, how about interesting? It's an interesting adjective. Um, I saw no. some so, warnings that some Adobe programs will not even run. Well, and that, that was Fortnite uh, wouldn't. It was that. Yeah, that was. That was something Samsung put out only on their, on their Korean website. Like, yeah. That's not. Yeah. No, think you don't that's, think that's true? No. I don't no. Think so. Well, I expect um, you to the immediately truth is, turn on Fortnite as soon as you get it. Okay. Well, well but I these will. These things I'll, aren't okay. uh, surprising. It's a new chip architecture. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. there's going to be some incompatibilities. I think it's going to be a lot less than people think. Um, you know, and I say that without having one in front of me, right? So. Um, and that's a, because they'll run in the emulation mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the emulator is dramatically better than it right. was before. Right. Dramatically better. So uh, obviously you want to get the native apps when they're available. Most of the time that's going to be seamless. If you go to download Chrome or Opera, one of those browsers, it's going to happen. If you go to download Visual Studio, you'll just get it. You don't have to do anything, right? That's how this should work, <laughs> right? Um, when, and Apple if, you know, to Apple should. when Apple switched to Apple Silicon, and I got my first Apple Silicon Mac. I really did not want to install any Intel software. Yeah, very hard experience. not to. Very hard not to. And when yep. you do, the at least with Apple, it said, "Okay, now we have to install Rosetta too. We have to install the compatibility layer." Uh, does Windows right. have that already installed, or, you, or is that? Yeah, that's already that's part okay. of it. Yeah. So you won't necessarily know if you're. In no, you won't know. Yeah. yeah, you won't know, and that and that's the thing. I mean, uh, in the old days, and by the old days, I mean. Just a few short years ago, right. <laughs> I, you could have made the argument that, or I would, in fact, I probably did, um, that running an an x86 app slowly on ARM is better than not being able to run it, right? Which was the problem with Windows RT. You mm -hmm. couldn't run it at all. It wasn't even an option. Um, you know, but that's not a good experience. And for this thing to fly with mainstream customers, it has to just work, right? One thing you, we're not really seeing in the advertising is this, uh, hey, by the way, it's a new architecture. It's different, you know, like like no yeah. one's talking about that. And the, the hope and the goal here is that it, it's because no one will notice, right? That uh, a normal human being, not a tech person, but someone like my wife or whomever, my brother, will bring this thing home, set it up and go on with the life and never once think about it. It will right. just kind of work. It will so be boring. Some apps will be better. Yes. You know, they'll notice, they'll be happy with how, that it performs well. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about this kind of stuff because obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious, but Microsoft has uh, changed the marketing for this platform from what used to be always connected, right, to yep. AI. You know, and we can we can debate and we will we should uh, debate the merits of that. I mean, I the the thing I've come to personally is that having used a MacBook Air recently and I, I honestly it's probably the fifth or sixth MacBook Air I've owned. But the the second Apple Silicon based Mac mm -hmm. uh, MacBook anyway, um, the, the thing that I or the things that I value there are this incredible combination of thin light efficient great battery life awesome performance nothing you throw at it this is normal stuff i mean but uh causes it to hitch or stutter or uh slow down it doesn't have fans so it can't you know make noise but um you know the normal experience this is another thing i really want to get to at some point in the show is you know meteor like pcs the the laptops that first started shipping last december i've reviewed several of them now and i've had many 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 problems and I've, uh, it was very gratifying to meet some other reviewers a month or so ago and, and have them confirm with me that they've also seen the same issues. But, you know, one of the things that we sort of put up with in the PC space without really thinking about it is that our computers will sometimes sound like jet engines, you know, and that yeah. out of box experience, the initial windows updates, the app updates. Um, I run a Winget script that probably installs, you know, I don't know what it is, 10 or 15 apps. Those machines, like, you know, I, I'll be sitting here at night just, you know, because it's automated, like running this while we're watching TV. And my wife looks over at me like, what are you, what is going on over there? Because the thing's like, it's melting know. down. Yeah, it's just going to town. And I, that's, that to me is the appeal of this platform, not the thing that Microsoft 
Qualcomm and uh, right. its PC maker partners are largely promoting the AI stuff. Although, you know, obviously they talk about the other stuff too, but um, I kind of feel like we've lost the script a little bit on what's important, you know? Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me. <laughs>